What's up guys, Zach here today, and we're gonna be looking at generators. So let's see what we need to know to understand generators better. Well, the first thing we need to know is whether they are used. So I'm going to introduce you to the world of generators. And then we're going to review Fleming's right-hand generator rule and use that to explain the electrodynamics of a generator. There'll be a few problems that we pick up along the way that both AC and DC generators that we're gonna be looking at are going to answer for us. And then finally, we're going to figure out how to strengthen a generator, how to make it produce more power. Okay, so let's look at where do we find generators? Well, generators are normally made in this big structure, part of a big powerhouse or power unit supply. And the first thing that they need is they need fire to generate and burn coal to create steam. That steam is then used to push a turbine that's connected to our generator. Our generator uses that mechanical energy to create electrical energy. And using that, it's connected to our loads. I'm gonna put a big light bulb here to represent our loads. So again, Generators take mechanical energy and create electrical energy, which is the opposite to what motors do. They take electrical energy to create mechanical energy. Okay, so let's see how Fleming's right-hand generator rule can help us with that. In this case, we need to remember that we need a magnetic field and we also need a current carrying wire, but we don't have any current yet because we want to induce that using a force. And to induce a, a current, we have to use his right-hand rule. If you place your fingers at opposite angles to each other like this. And you remember that the force is for your thumb, the magnetic field is for your index finger, and your current is shown by your middle finger. And then you place them in the directions of each of the respective uh, um, con uh, contributors in this case. So in this, we have a magnetic field going across like this, our thumb pointing up, our current should be coming out of the page towards you. So the induced current that we induce is going to come out of the screen towards you as the dot shows them. So, this showed us how to use things with just a single conductor, but we need two conductors, if you remember, in a motor to create that rotation we're looking for. So let's see what the dynamics of a coil look like when we now apply a force to create a current. So here's our two magnets, again, from a top and a side view. This is quite important because we're going to need to be able to see the rotation and the current direction at the same time. So here's our coil that we're looking for, and we're gonna look on it from a side view. We're gonna look into it like this. That's what this little symbol at the bottom here shows, that we're looking into it. That's our eyeball to show that we're looking at them from a side of an angle. Well, now we need to be able to show the direction of current. Well, that's where the labels come in, A, B, and C, and D. I've shown them on both sides with the conductor straights being shown A, B, and C, D all together, okay? So now we want to apply a force and we're gonna keep that force, just remember, it's rotating around. And in this case, as it's rotating, it's gonna induce a current as I've shown here. Well, what direction does that current on our top view look like? Well, it's around the correction. So A, B is gonna have the current going away from you with the X and then C, D is gonna have the current coming towards you with the dot. But now when it gets to the top, the current changes direction. So what does that look like on our direction from top view? Well, it's just the opposite of what we just had. Well, now what does the rotation do? It continues across and continues inducing that current. But now you might be thinking, well, when I twist a lot of things around like that, the problem is that we're going to get a really muddled up conductor. So how do we keep the power coming out without getting all our coils and things mixed up? Well, AC generators use a very interesting little clever tool. And that tool is called a slip rings, or rather they're called slip rings. And if we have our little coil sticking out like this, what you do is you attach them to slip rings. These are rings that basically revolve around like that. And as that rotation, we can keep the connection without losing our wires all tangled up. But we still need to get the power out. And that's where our carbon brushes, if you remember from our split rings earlier, but we'll get to those in a moment. So this carbon brushes pop out like that. And that allows us then to keep the connection with the generated so that we can get the power out, power lights and so on. But let's look at what this looks like in terms of the output waveform, because it's quite interesting to look at. So here again, we have our magnets and we have our conductors that are gonna rotate in this direction that I'm just showing for interest sake. But we're now interested in the induced EMF, which you should remember means the electromotive force. And this should then ring a second bell for you along Faraday's law, which I've just given to you here on top. But this is specifically looking at the change in magnetic field. Because if we now want to plot this with respect to position, so as we move this conductor around, the EMF is going to change because we have different levels of magnetic flux that we're going to need to measure. So right on top here, the problem is that with the position that it's starting here, the magnetic field lines and the direction of motion are in the same direction. So there isn't any EMF, as I've shown just here. So it's still at zero, but now as it starts rotating, it's going to induce the force, sorry, induce the current, because it's going to start cutting through very few. So it's going to cut through very few magnetic field lines. So it's not a lot, but it's not a maximum either. Sorry, it's not zero either. But then it goes and it continues rotating until it's a maximum. 
And that maximum is where it now goes over the max and then starts decreasing again because it's going through fewer lines until it reaches that zero point again, where the direction of motion is in the same direction or, perpen or parallel to the direction of the field lines. And But now something interesting happens because it's crossed the horizontal. As you remember, the current is going to flip. So here the currents just change directions. And now we've got a negative induced EMF. But that doesn't worry us because that's what AC power is. It's alternating current going in one direction and then the other. So the current getting induced in the one direction comes around and changes in the direction after it's gone 180 degrees. So here's our entire curve. Let's see what it looks like when it does the full rotation. You see it hits that maximum, comes down, goes through the zero, and then right around to the bottom, all the way back up to the zero. So that's AC power using slip rings. But you remember that we have DC power as well. So how do we get that out from a generator? Well, they have a very interesting device that you've already seen in your motors. And that is that the split ring commutator. And the split ring commutator does the same thing that it did in generators, where we have our two conductors coming out from our coil. They connect to our split rings. And the split rings get the power out using those carbon brushes you should remember. So how does this look in terms of its induced EMF? Well, the induced EMF here has a magnetic field going across like that. And we have the same configuration of our magnetic field. Only difference here is now we're connected to a split ring, not a slip ring. Cool. So here's our induced EMF and our position graph as we had earlier. It follows the same pattern that the AC followed with the first row, where our induced EMF is still zero at the starting point. But as it goes, it doesn't change. It's exactly the same because we've still got the positive half cycle. But now as we get around, it still hits that maximum that we're looking for just here. And it continues around to our bottom. But then we get to the bottom, it flips, it keeps the positive cycle. And that's what the slip rings were there for. They flip our current every half a cycle. And there it is. That's our DC induced EMF. So what does this look like as it rotates fully? Well, as it goes around, hits that maximum and then makes its way back to zero as it gets that reset point sort of, and then flips over and go, continues. Isn't that simple? Well, there's one more thing we need to look at for generators before we finish. And that's how to strengthen generators. And to understand this better, let's quickly review Faraday's law in totality. Well, we remember the induced EMF is our E. And then we remember our green, or in this case, our change in magnetic flux is given to us by the delta phi. Then using the delta T gives us the change in time and the N gives us the number of coils. And that gives us our electromotive force. So there's three ways that we can improve our generator. The first is that we can increase the magnetic field strength. That simply says we have more magnetic field lines. The second way that we can improve it is by having more coils. So here we have just a singular coil with a very small little induced EMF. But then if we add more, if we add more coils, we get a much larger EMF. And that's the second way we can do it. But the third way is a bit tricky because it's still something that doesn't make a lot of sense, at least when you think about it quickly. But once you think through the whole process, it makes perfect sense. And that is to increase the speed of rotation. So here's our normal speed that it comes through. And it has an induced EMF that looks something like this. And we're using the AC variant here. This, nothing should be making, nothing should be confusing at this point. The problem is now when we start doubling the speed, because now we're getting double the number of waves and it's also double the amplitude. And that's got to do with the fact that it's rotating faster and it's inducing a larger EMF. So remember that, that in doubling the speed does exactly two things. It increases the amplitude as well as the fact that it now has a double, it has double half the frequency. It rotates twice as fast. That all makes sense, right? Okay, let's review what we've done today and then we can close off. So today's first thing that we looked at was the electrodynamics of a generator, saying that if we have a magnetic field and two conductors with a force applied to them, we can induce a current. And then we found out how AC generators get past the problem of tangling wires using slip rings. And that gave us the induced EMF of a sine wave shape. Then we looked at DC generators and using their split ring commutator, we found that we could get a DC output like that. And then we looked at how to strengthen generators. That was done using stronger magnetic fields, increased number of coils, and finally the increased rotational speed. Well, that's everything you'll need to know about generators for your exam. I hope you guys have had a great time and I'll see you next time.